Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. How many of you guys have finally done the Vespa Host Dungeon nice. this season? While the final boss may look tedious at first, he's not actually that bad after you've done a few test runs with him. However, if you're looking for a build that would two-phase the final boss easily, then this build is surely going to meet your needs. With Star Eaters, Nova Bomb, Bait and Switch Grenade Launcher, and Concussive Reload Mod, this build destroys the final boss and makes your life a lot less chaotic the next time you face them. So we start with the general aim in the Zotica to build. Our aim is to showcase a powerful and simple build that players can use when entering the Vespa host dungeon. For this, we will be using Wither Horde and Slipsium. Start with our Zotic armor, Slipsium, with its exotic effect, it states, A Spear of Apotheus, a temporarily gain greatly increased melee and grenade regeneration after your super ends. A Spear of the Star Eaters, while your super is full, a picking up and overpower overcharges your super, granting it bonus damage. While this is one of the best class bond combos to get, you don't need to worry so much if you can't replicate what I have. Truthfully, you only need to get a roll with Star Eaters on it to match what the build is going for. This is where the huge damage will appear once we combine this with the debuff mod to help. If you don't have the roll or class bond at all, then using the Pophius Veil with Nova is a cheap but effective method to also utilize. Our second exotic is Wither Horde, with its exotic effect, Prime Evil's Torment, which states, Projected fire by the weapon, blight the target or nearby area on impact. Wither Horde is one of the best singular damage exotics to use in game when you want to maximize your damage against enemies quickly and in a short time. Now, since time has passed, we have seen new frame types being introduced that act similar to what Wither Horde does. A good example of this is Lost Signal, which I have found to use on and off when I don't want to use an exotic slot up. A Lost Signal can get lead from gold and warp a weapon, which I would say makes it more superior to Wither Horde. On the other hand, Wither Horde when it hits a target will stick to them if it's a direct hit, which means you won't lose up damage over time. It can also auto reload which makes it fast to apply concussive reload debuff. However you look at it, the two weapons have their strengths that makes it viable to use nonetheless. It all depends now if you want a specific exotic to use or not. For aspects and fragments we have the following. A feed the void where getting an ability kill will grant you devour. Helion where using your class ability will summon a solar mortar that will scorch and ignite targets. A faster of grace where defeating targets with kinetic weapons will grant us bonus transcendence energy. Using our super and defeating targets will grant us and our teammates extra transcendence energy. A faster protection where being surrounded by enemies will make you more resistant to incoming attacks. A faster of hope where having an element of buff will regenerate your class ability over time. A faster of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants mean energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark damage grants grenade energy. And Faster of Solitude where landing position hits emit a 7 blast from the target. As we have explained, this build will be used for boss encounters. It's best we stick with a simple and effective setup that can be used anywhere you like. We want to make sure we're able to deal out damage over time through every method available. So having Faster of Grace for the full transcendence energy recovery is a must if you're using Wither Horde. After this, Faster of Hope and Balance will focus on our ability cooldown rate over time. So this is also a must have for applying pressure. A debuff wise, we have concussive reload on hand, so repairing this up with fast or solitude will weaken the target's health and damage from our end. And then lastly, extra protection is always handy to have, so fast or protection or purpose is recommended since damage reduction is ready at tier 10 for the build currently. As mentioned before, this should be very basic to understand and use, as you want to maximize your damage and survival as best as possible. For the mods and stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. I have added the Concussive Dampner mod for the 15% AoE damage reduction we'll face. On top of that, I have added the Fast Up Protection for the extra damage reduction when surrounded, which will be helpful when facing the multiple enemies we face. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. Since we aren't using fast or dominance for the elemental verb, our art grenades are just standard at this point. Now this can be added if you wish by removing fast or solitude instead, but you will lose the ability to weaken enemies damage, which can be helpful in our case. Either way, arc or void grenades are a good choice to pick if you don't intend to rely on them so much, like usual. Now in terms of ability cooldown, we have the following. 
impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, momentum transfer for a 12% melee buff, bolstering detonation for a 12% class ability buff, orbs of restoration for a 10% ability cooldown based on the lowest active ability, and distribution for a 4% ability buff will cover the ability regeneration of the current build. Additional mods we have the following. Ashes assets for super energy regen via grenade kills, heavy ammo finder, reserves and scavenger mods for a heavy weapon, solar siphon for creating also power via matching element of type, solar surge mod for a 10% solar weapon buff, and power attraction where activating your class ability will automatically collect orbs of power in your venicity. So as we have covered our exotic priming weapon and the alternative to also use, I will then advise you to pick some suitable weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary is the No Hesitation AR with Demolitionist and Circle of Life. Now, while it might sound odd to use this weapon for the final boss encounter, it's actually more useful than you think. The purpose of this is to help my teammates survive and not get killed in unreachable areas. The added healing bonus me and my teammates get will help a lot when dealing with the clones and mass lightning attacks, which will also increase our team DPS when no one dies. I also get a 25% weapon buff via Circle of Life perk, so it's encouraging users to heal as much as possible. Now if you prefer the more hard hitting route, then the bearer action with Envious and Incandescent is also a nice alternative to also use. Be sure to add the special finder mods to also help. For Heavy, we have the Edge Transit with Fill Prep and Bane Switch. While my role doesn't have the spike grenades as well to fully achieve the god roll, this is generally fine. Using this combined with my super, a prime exotic, and concussive reload mod is the correct setup needed for dealing huge amounts of damage on a singular target with fairly ease. This is a weapon that everyone can get and farm, so be sure to grab one and at least try and get the bait switch perk as that's generally what's going to make up the most amount of damage. To conclude the video, we have gone over the strengths and weaknesses the build offers to players in higher tier end game content. We have also covered the flexible nature of the build and how it can be operated with or without the chosen exotics provided. As the dungeon is fairly new and many players are looking for a fast way to complete the final boss in a short amount of time, I can say with confidence this build does fairly well in survival and DPS over time. Now while a class bond may be an issue to most players who don't have it, this is nonetheless a small issue that most players can feasibly ignore until they get the time to farm one. On top of that, the main damage of the build is being conjured up from our chosen grenade launchers, which have accompanying season mods to boost its effect further down the line. One thing you must know of the build though is that it plays best when in the team, as that's where its true damage can appear when coordinated well. But overall, I hope this build helps you the same way it helped me clear this new and amazing content efficiently. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. Well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and sub while you're here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.